Today our topic is the oval cavity, the palatine tonsil, the pharynx, and we will in this we will study the various division of the pharynx, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx along with their clinical significance. So starting with the oval cavity, this is the oval cavity. The oval cavity extends from the lips to the oropharyngeal isthmus. The oropharyngeal isthmus is located posteriorly and anteriorly of the lips. The oropharyngeal isthmus is the junction of the mouth with the pharynx. Beyond that is the pharynx. And the oropharyngeal isthmus is bounded above by the soft palate, below by the posterior one third of the tongue, and laterally by the palatoglossal arch is on either side. The oral cavity is divided into two parts, the vestibule between the cheek and the gums. This is the vestibule and the oral cavity proper. The vestibule, this is the vestibule. The vestibule is the slit-like space between the between the gums and lips and cheeks. Between the gums, lips and cheeks. It communicates anteriorly through the oral fissure, that is between the lips. A fissure is formed which is called oral fissure. So it communicates anteriorly to the outside through the oral fissure. But when the jaws are closed, then the vestibule communicates with the oral cavity proper behind the last tooth. And superiorly and inferiorly and on sides, it is limited by the reflection of mucous membrane from the lips and cheeks to the gums. Reflection of mucous membrane from the lips, lips and cheeks to the gums. So it does not go beyond that. The lateral wall of the vestibule is formed by the cheek, which is composed of the buccinator muscle covered laterally by the skin and medially by the mucosa. The mucosa opposite the second molar tooth shows an opening which is the opening of the parotid duct. The oral cavity proper, this is the oral cavity proper. The oral cavity proper is bounded and prolaterally by the teeth, the gums and the alveolar processes. It has a roof superiorly which is formed by the hard palate and the soft palate and inferiorly there is a tongue on the posterior side and interiorly there is a sublingual region below the tongue. And this oral cavity proper opens into the oropharynx through the oropharyngeal isthmus. The pharynx is a funnel shaped fibromuscular tube extending from the base of the skull to the esophagus base of the skull above and the esophagus below. It is lined, lined throughout by the mucous membrane. The pharynx acts as a common channel for both air and food. This is, it is situated behind, behind the nose, mouth and the larynx. Superiorly, it is bounded by the base of the skull, the base of the skull including the posterior part of the sphenoid bone, body of the sphenoid and the part of the basilar part of the occipital bone in front of the pharyngeal tubercle. Inferiorly it communicates with the esophagus at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage anteriorly and the 
lower part of the sixth cervical vertebra posteriorly. Posteriorly is the prevertebral fascia in front of the cervical spine. Pharynx is separated. The pharynx is separated from the prevertebral fascia only by a loose layer of areolar tissue. This areolar tissue allows the pharynx to slide freely on the fascia during swallowing. Anteriorly, it opens into the nasal cavities, the mouth and the larynx. Laterally, there is neurovascular bundle of the neck and the styloid process with the attached ligaments. The pharynx is subdivided into three parts. These from above downwards are number eight, the nasopharynx, then comes the oropharynx, and then the laryngopharynx behind the larynx. Now we will discuss the nasopharynx. The nasopharynx lies behind the nasal cavities and the soft palate. It is bounded above. The roof is formed by the body of the sphenoid and the basilar part of the occipital bone. Its floor is formed by the soft palate, the upper sloping surface of the soft palate and the pharyngeal esthmus. The pharyngeal esthmus is an opening in the floor of the nasopharynx between the free edge of the soft palate and the pharyngeal wall. The anterior wall is formed by the posterior nasal apertures separated by the posterior edge of the nasal septum. The posterior wall, it forms, con it forms continuous sloping surface with the roof and it is separated by the arch of C1 vertebra. The lateral wall has the opening of the eustachian tube which is surrounded by the lymphoid tissue which is called the tubal tonsil. Now let us discuss some features of the nasopharynx. This is the nasopharyngeal tonsil. The nasopharyngeal tonsil is a collection of lymphoid tissue beneath the mucous membrane at the junction of the roof with the posterior wall. At the junction of the roof with the posterior wall. A fold of mucous membrane extends upward into the substance of the nasopharyngeal tonsil. This is this fold is called the pouch of Lushka or it is also called the nasopharyngeal bagsa or the pouch of Lushka. Then is the orifice of the pharyngotympanic tube. It lies on the lateral wall at, at the level of the inferior concha this is superior concha, this is middle concha, this is inferior concha. So it lies in the lateral wall of the nasopharynx at the level of the inferior nasal concha. Its upper and posterior margins, its upper and posterior margins, these are, its upper and posterior margins are bounded by the tubal elevation. There is tubal elevation which is produced by collection of lymphoid tissue called the tubal tonsil. Two mucus folds extend downward. Two mucus folds extend downward from the elevation. One is the salpingopharyngeal fold. Salpingopharyngeal fold. It contains the sulfingopharyngeous muscle and the other is sulfingopalatine fold. It contains the levator palati muscle. Then is the this part, this is called the naso, this is called the pharyngeal rhesus. The pharyngeal rhesus is a deep depression behind the tubal elevation. In the tubal elevation, there is a deep depression called the pharyngeal rhesus or fossa of Rosenmuller. So, this is the fossa of Rosenmuller or pharyngeal rhesus. Some fibers of the palatopharyngeus which arise from the 
Palatine epinogases go horizontally backward and join the upper fibers of the superior constrictor muscle to form a U-shaped muscle loop around the posterior and lateral wall of the pharyngeal isthmus. When during swallowing, during swallowing, when the palate is elevated, the palate elevates to close the pharyngeal isthmus. During swallow, swallowing, the palate is elevated to close the pharyngeal isthmus. At the, at the same time, this U-shaped muscle also contract and an elevated muscle band and an elevated muscle band become visible which appears as a ridge under the mucosa and this ridge is called the Pesavent's ridge. During swallowing the palate and the this ridge approximate with each other and close the pharyngeal isthmus. So this also act as palato pharyngeal sphincter. The nasopharyngeal tonsils, the nasopharyngeal tonsils are prominent in children up to the age of six years and then gradually undergo atrophy until puberty and almost completely disappear by the age of 20. The nasopharyngeal tonsils when enlarged due to infection they are called adenoids which block the posterior nares and mouth breathing occurs. The affected, the affected children present the present with nasal obstruction, blockage of the nose, nasal discharge and mouth breathing with protrusion of the tongue. Toneless voice due to absence of nasal tone and a small nose and epistaxis bleeding from the nose. The infection of the pharynx can easily pass to the middle ear through the pharyngotympanic tube. Now we will study the oropharynx. It lies behind the oral cavity. It extends from the lower surface of the soft palate above to the upper border of the epiglottis below. The roof is formed by the under surface of the soft palate and the pharyngeal isthmus through which it communicates into the nasopharynx. The floor, the floor is formed by the posterior one third of the tongue. The floor is formed by the posterior one third of the tongue and the interval between the tongue and the epiglottis. The anterior wall is incomplete and is formed by the oropharyngeal isthmus through which it communicates with the oral cavity and the pharyngeal part of the tongue. Then the posterior wall is formed by the, the posterior wall is formed by the, by the body of C2 vertebrae and the upper part of the body of C3 vertebrae. The lateral wall on each side, the lateral wall on each side is supported by the pterygomandibular raphe, the mandible, the tongue and the hyoid bone. The oropharynx provide a common path for food and air. The lateral wall of the oropharynx show the palatine tonsil. This is the palatine tonsil on either side. One palatine tonsil on one side and the other on the other side. It is located in a triangular fossa, the tonsillar fossa which is bounded anteriorly by the palatoglossal arch and posteriorly by the palatopharyngeal arch. The anterior wall presents the lingual tonsil which is formed by the numerous nodules of lymphoid tissue underneath the mucous lining of the pharyngeal part of the dorsum of the tongue. The upper, there is upper free end of the epiglottis behind the tongue and there are two folds the median and lateral 
epiglottic folds connecting the anterior surface and the edges of the epiglottis to the tongue. The epiglottic velliculi are shallow foci between the median and lateral glossoepiglottic folds. This is the median glossoepiglottic fold and these are the lateral glossoepiglottic fold which connect the tongue with the epiglottis. This is epiglottis. In between the median and lateral glossoepiglottic fold there are shallow foci known as the epiglottic velliculi. So this is one these are epiglottic velliculi. This is the oropharyngeal isthmus. The oropharyngeal isthmus is an arched opening between the two palatoglossal folds. This is one palatoglossal fold. This is another palatoglossal fold. So this is an arched opening between the two palatoglossal folds. Above is the soft palate. Below is the dorsal surface of the posterior one third of the tongue. Lateral is the palatoglossal fold on either side. The, the oral oropharyngeal esthmus is closed during deglutition to prevent the entry of food from the pharynx into the mouth. Since the pathways for food and air cross each other in the oropharynx, the food sometimes may enter into the respiratory tract and cause choking. Similarly, the air often enters the digestive tract producing gas in the stomach which result in, results in belching. Now we will discuss the laryngopharynx. The laryngopharynx lies behind the laryngeal inlet and the posterior wall of the larynx. It extends from the upper border of the epiglottis up to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage anteriorly and the lower border of the C6 vertebra posteriorly. It communicates anteriorly with the laryngeal cavity through the laryngeal inlet and inferiorly it is continuous with the esophagus at the pharyngoesophageal junction. Boundaries anterior wall, it is formed by the laryngeal inlet and the posterior surface of the larynx. The posterior wall, the posterior wall is supported by the C the bodies of the C3, C4, C5 and C6 cervical vertebrae. The lateral wall is supported by the thyroid cartilage and thyroid membrane. The anterior wall presents the laryngeal inlet and below it is supported by the cricoid cartilage and arytenoid cartilages. The lateral wall presents on either side a fossa called the piriform fossa which is located on either side of the larynx. On either side of the larynx, the lateral wall of the laryngopharynx show a fossa which is called the piriform fossa. There are aggregates of lymphoid tissue beneath the epithelium of the pharyngeal wall called tonsils. These aggregate of lymphoid tissue is called tonsils and they surround the commencement of the air and food passages, the tonsils. They are arranged in the form of a ring which is called Waldair's ring. The Waldair ring is formed by the pharyngeal tonsil called the nasopharyngeal tonsil posterior superiorly and the lingual tonsil anteriorly. The tubal and palatine tonsil laterally this form an interrupted ring which is called the Waldair ring.
which prevent the invasion of microorganism from entering the air and food passages and this help in defense of the respiratory and alimentary systems so these are the tonsil the pharyngeal tonsil the palatine tonsil and the lingual tonsil and the tubal tonsils now we will discuss the palatine tonsils commonly known as tonsils each tonsil there are two tonsils on either sides each tonsil is an almond shaped mass of lymphatic tissue situated in a triangular fossa called the tonsillar fossa on the lateral wall of the oropharynx between the anterior pillar and the posterior pillar the anterior pillar is formed by the palatoglossal arch and the posterior pillar is formed by the palatopharyngeal arch now we will study the boundaries of the tonsillar fossa anteriorly is the palatoglossal arch containing the palatoglossus muscle and posteriorly is the palatopharyngeal arch containing the palatopharyngeal muscle and the apex is at the apex is the soft palate where both the arches meet and the base is formed by the dark cell surface of the posterior one third of the tongue and the lateral wall or tonsillar bed the lateral wall or tonsillar bed is formed by the superior constrictor muscle mainly let us now study the features of tonsil first we will study the medial surface of tonsil the medial surface of tonsil this one the medial surface of tonsil is free and bulges into the oropharynx it is lined by the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium which dips into its substance forming crepts so on the medial surface there are crepts the number of crepts vary from 12 to 15 and their opening can be seen on the medial surface now we will study the lateral surface of the tonsil the lateral surface of the tonsil is covered by a well defined fibrous tissue which is known as the tonsillar hemicapsule between the capsule and the bed of the tonsil there is space which contain the loose areolar tissue areolar tissue this is called the peritonsillar space it is easy to dissect the tonsil and remove the tonsil due to this peritonsillar space and it is also the site where the peritonsillar abscess form the superior constrictor muscle separates the lateral surface of the tonsil from the following structures the facial artery its ascending and tonsillar branches the stylo-glossus muscle and the glossopharyngeal nerve the stylite process the angle of the mandible the medial pterygoid muscle the submandibular salivary gland and the internal carotid artery is 2.5 cm from the posterior lateral the internal carotid artery is about 2.5 cm posterior lateral to the tonsil the tonsil has an anterior border which is behind the palato glossal fold and a posterior border which is anterior to the palato pharyngeal fold it has an upper pole which extend up to the soft palate and a lower pole which is attached to the tongue by a fibrous tissue called the suspensory ligament of the the suspensory ligament of the tonsil